Okay, today we're talking about saints, the communion of saints. We have the canonized saints here, saints of God, and we have all the saints of God. Canonized saints of God are canonized by the church. And then we have all saints of God, those who would be everybody who has died, who, who is a faithful believer. And the church is holy. These are the contents right here. The church is holy. Baptism makes a person one in Christ. Uh, since the catacomb days, evidence of sanctity. Who is a saint? The church recognizes two types of saints and communion of saints. The church is holy because Christ made her holy. St. Paul said, imitate Christ who loved the church and sacrificed him, himself for her to make her holy. So the reason why we are saints is because we have been sprinkled and cleaned of our impurities. We've been given a new heart and a new spirit. And God has taken away our stony hearts, giving us the natural hearts. And he's put his spirit within us. It says baptism makes a person one in Christ. When you are baptized, we become members of the mystical body of Christ. And whoever believes in Christ is reborn from above. They are regenerated through the work of the Holy Spirit. New life received in baptism. For those who live in Christ, death is a passage from earthly life to the heavenly home. Since the catacomb days, evidence of sanctity um, has come from the early martyrs, early Christian saints. The martyrs are those who were killed for their heroic faith and belief. Uh, Origen was one of the first church fathers who understood the veneration of the saints and gave it a theological uh, foundation. He placed it within the, the doctrine of the communion of saints. In St. Cyril in 315, he distinguished between two types of saints. Those who were the, the saints who are holy and should be venerated, uh, used in Eucharistic prayers to ask uh, their special intercession, and the other saints who would benefit by the prayers of the sacrifice. So the first century custom of invoking the saints was belief in their power of their intercession. And the first two Roman popes who laid a doctrinal position of people who had extraordinary sanctity and who should be followed and imitate were Saints Leo and Saint Gregory. They said to call on the saints, they are special intercessors to help us obtain mercy by their prayers and to also call upon them for protection. Who is a saint? On the solemnity of all saints feast day, we celebrate every November 1st at the Eucharistic liturgy. It reminds us that everyone is called to the, to the vocation of holiness. And celebrating this feast day allows all Christians to experience the joy of being part of a large family of God's friends. Or St. Paul writes to share the lot of saints. The Apostle John said, see what love the Father has bestowed on us in letting us call the children of God. That is what we are. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So the early church venerated this innumerable community of all saints who through their different paths of life show us the various ways of holiness united by a common goal. First, they must follow Christ. And then they must be conformed into the image of the Son of God. Every Christian is a saint who is a friend of God. And St. Paul refers to them in all his letters more than 30 times to Christian believers as saints. And here we have pictures of uh, St. Louis and uh, Zelie Martin. They were the first canonized couple. Uh, four of their daughters were Carmelite nuns, and they lost a few children from early childhood deaths. And they were a great role model for many families today in sanctity. And to our right, we have uh, Gianna Mola. She is a doctor who co contacted cancer, and she refused any treatment because she had a child in her womb. And she believed in the preciousness and the, the value of the sanctity of childhood and the beauty of birth, that she was willing to abstain from any medical treatment until the child was born. And by then, she had complications and died, of course, from the cancer. But the child lived, and I recently heard her 
her daughter speak, who also became a doctor, speak at a conference talking about the beauty and sanctity of of life and of love be and between a man and a woman who give their lives for the children. Now, the church recognizes two types of saints. They are, like as I just said a moment ago, they are the capital S saints canonized by the church and the small S saints, those who are the faithful Christians who followed Christ, who were holy in their own way, but maybe they didn't have great examples of holiness. Maybe they didn't do heroic virtues of faith and charity by martyrdom. But nonetheless, they exhibited the, the essence and the presence of God in their lives. And they are the small s saints. So there's two types of saints, you might say. But in God's eyes, they're all saints. Some maybe a little more heroically lived their faith, but nonetheless loved by God. And here's a nice little diagram here of the communion of saints. And I also thought you might like this picture over here to my left, talking about a little bit how our faith works through baptism and repentance and how we end up going towards heaven. And the communion of saints. Vatican II placed great emphasis on the communion that exists between the faithful on earth, heaven, and purgatory. There is a unity and Vatican II wanted this explained and developed in a greater way. This doctrine is a foundation of a Catholic practice invoking the saints and its basis for canonization. There are three, you might say, states of existence of Christians, those on earth, those suffering in purgatory, and those in heaven uh, in the presence of God. They call that the church militant, suffering, and triumphant. Or you could say there are three states of the church, the mystical body of Christ. And we all form one body in Christ. All of us members, those who have died, those who are in purgatory, and those here on earth. And we can share amongst each other our spiritual graces for praying for one another, offering up suffering, offering up our good deeds. And that's where the term communion of saints in the catechism is talking about. It's linked to two meanings, the communion of holy things and the communion of unholy persons. Holy things would be like the gifts, the sacraments that the church gives us in the Eucharist, where it brings us all together. Uh, the charisms we're here on earth, where we share with one another our gifts and talents, or where we love one another. Or the communion among holy persons, where those on uh, three different levels, we can pray for each other, we can have a friendship and prayer, and we can help each other. And of course, everything is united around the Eucharist, where the whole mystical body of Christ comes together every time the church celebrates the liturgy, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, where Christ's presence is truly there. Those on earth and those in heaven and those, of course, in purgatory who are waiting their uh, entrance into heaven. And the communion of saints, just to reiterate it one more time, it's the communion of saints is referring to holy things, the Eucharist, which unites all believers in the one body of Christ. And the term communion of saints is a communion of holy persons where, you know, we're all in Christ, those died and those here on earth. And what we do, we can affect one another. We can offer up, communicate these goods, you might say, of our prayers and our offerings and sufferings to bring about, you might say, one united body that helps one another. God bless, brothers, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.